Good afternoon and welcome to Pay Entry's um, weekly webinar. Today we're going to be talking about labor law posters um, and all the um, rules and regulations surrounding that. Um, my name is Kathy Graham and I know many of you that are on the call today um, by phone and email. Um, I am um, head of the HR services area. Brianna Grimes is also on today's call. Uh, she always helps with the questions at the end and Brianna does a webinar every other week and I do a webinar every other week. So next week's uh, webinar, Brianna will introduce at the end of this session. Um, today, I wanna remind you that I'm not an attorney and I'm not giving you legal advice today, just an FYI. Um, this is from a human resources um, uh, perspective and every company is different, so make sure that you have the rules in place that apply to your organization. There is a copy of this presentation as a PDF handout on your screen, and if you want to print that out, we will also be sending you a copy of the recording um, if you registered for this program, and if you're here, that means you registered. So let's get started today. So the purpose of posters is to make sure that employees know about all of their legal rights and responsibilities. That's bottom line, that's why. There are different federal and state organizations that want employees to know what their rights are, and so it's the employer's responsibility to make sure that they're informed. Who cares what you post? There are a number of organizations that care. The federal agencies that require and monitor postings are the EEOC, which is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or also, also OSHA, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the Department of Labor. Um, the Department of Labor is concerned with your FMLA postings, your FLSA, which is your Fair Labor Standards Act that governs wages. Um, the Employee Polygraph Protection Act, and USERA, which is regarding Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act. State and local governments also care about what you're posting. Each state is different, and there can be up to 15 additional posters depending on your location. And remember now, if you have people working uh, remotely, you have to post for their the state that they reside in, um, not just at your work site. So each state has different um, posters and government contractors have additional posting requirements. So if you are if you have a government contract of any sort, um, you probably know that and should be posting those as well. And there are local government postings, especially in California a number, and New York. Some of the larger states have a lot of local postings. So um, what about notifying remote employees? Well, on December the 29th of last year, the Department of Labor for, provided guidance on this because a number of, uh, of us do have employees who work remotely. Electronic posting is only acceptable when all employees exclusively work remotely. They all receive customarily information from the employer um, by electronic means, like you're communicating with people via email, etc. And all employees have available access to electronic posting at all times. If you have an employee that doesn't have access to a computer at home, um, they probably aren't working at home, if that's the case, but you do need to make sure that employees have available access at all times. For employers with on-site and remote employees, both methods should be used. Also, the other Department of Labor requirements for e-posters are that the e-notice must be as effective as the physical hard copy posting. So it pretty much should be almost a picture of what you're posting in your break rooms or in those other accessible areas within your organization. Employees have to be able to access it without 
requesting permission to view. They should not need a password to view it. Um, and the posting would be insufficient if the employer doesn't customarily post other notices electronically. Posting is not sufficient if, it's a, if affected employees can't easily determine which posting is applicable to them and their work site. So if you're posting things for four different states on one website, that would not um, be sufficient for the Department of Labor. It needs to be specifically identifiable to that individual um, and their location. So let's talk about some mistakes that employers regularly make regarding posters and poster compliance. Number one, they don't post local posters. And that is important because if you have a city that has passed a law that's more generous than a federal or a state law, then employees need to know about that. Sometimes that's a minimum wage issue. It could be regarding some paid leave laws, which are very common in California. It could be regarding non-discrimination guidelines. Different locales have different guidelines and some are much more stringent than the federal or the state. They may have additional protected classes, that is sexual orientation or sexual preference, for an example. Mistake number two is not recognizing that these poster laws apply to remote workers also. You must notify all employees, not just the ones that are under your roof. The format really is not specified except for what the Department has laid, of Labor has outlined as being um, a legitimate e-poster. So it can be electronic or you can send it by paper to each one of your off-site or remote employees. Just use your best judgment and if the employee is in your office several times a month, that should be sufficient for a poster notification. If they never come into your office, um, then notices must be available via email or internet intranet, depending on um, how, the, uh, how your operation works for as far as communicating electronically. Mistake number three is assuming that foreign language posters are optional. There are 21 states and the District of Columbia that require posters in both English and Spanish, regardless of your demographics. If your workforce contains a significant number of Spanish-speaking employees, then posters must be in English and Spanish, regardless of what state you're in. And here's a uh, listing right now of the states that right now that require both English and Spanish posters. So you can probably just target your state there and see if you're on the list. And it never um, is a bad thing to post it, even if your state doesn't require it. So mistake number four is displaying only one set of posters in a large facility. If you just have them at your front door, then that's not a good thing. If you have a huge plant and you have different break rooms that different employees might go into, um, labor law posters have to be displayed in prominent and conspicuous locations throughout your business. They have to be accessible to all employees, and that implies that they're in areas that are frequently visited by your employees. That can be break rooms, restrooms, lobbies, um, outdoor areas. It depends on where your employees might congregate. A lot of companies put them near the time clocks. If they're near the the um, the, the door where they come in and clock in, that's a, that may a good, be a good place for you. What you want to do is target highly visible areas that get the most traffic. So like an employee entrance, a break room, which I just mentioned, um, or near the time clocks. Still on this same topic, if um, 
there are four federal posters that must be displayed in, in places where applicants can view it. And not just employees now, but applicants. That's the EEOC poster, the USERRA poster, the Polygraph Protection Act poster, and FMLA if you have more than 50, uh, 50 employees in your company within a 75 mile radius. So if FMLA applies to you, it must be posted where applicants can see it. Online postings also must have a link to your current uh, <clears throat> labor law postings so that applicants can see what their rights are. So mistake number five is assuming that posting requirements are the same for all businesses. They're definitely not. Certain businesses have additional um, industry-specific posting requirements. The public sector or government employers have different laws that apply to them, such as E-Verify, the Right to Know poster, the Whistleblower Protection poster, and notices about electronic monitoring. Those are required in government facilities or by government employers. Healthcare facilities also have up to 15 additional notices regarding things like biohazards, radiation areas, HIPAA, and other things that are directly related to healthcare. Sometimes various safety issues. It does depend in this situation on the state and the type of facility. So that's a very specific um, industry specific notice. In addition, restaurants have different posting requirements and it does depend on the state. There has to be choking assistance information posted, um, notices for tipped employees about how they're paid. There has to be a poster on CPR procedures and information about serving alcohol to minors. The list goes on and it does depend on industries. So you may, we may not have touched on yours today, but there are many industries outside of these that still have specific um, types of postings that are required. Government contractors, for example, postings will depend on the type of contracts that they have as an organization and the agencies that they deal with. The most common of those are um, minimum wage, the Walsh-Healy public service contracts, paid sick leave, the whistleblower rights poster, EEO poster, the um, Department of Health and Human Services fraud line, a pay transparency statement and notice to workers with disabilities, the Department of um, Defense fraud hotline and the Davis-Bacon poster, the Department of Defense whistleblower hotline and the Department of Transportation Federal Highway Construction, uh, National Labor Relations Act, and then E-Verify right to work. So these, there are a lot of posters that apply to government contractors. So what happens if you don't comply? Um, the fines are very steep. Um, multiple locations for your company can have multiple violations. And the lack of one poster would be a violation. The lack of another would be another violation. It's not just that you have the um, wrong posters up or you have outdated posters up or you haven't completed the information that's required on each of your posters um, to be written in by the employer. Um, it, each of those carries a fine. Federal level violations can be $35,000 or more per location. And then state and local level violations are typically between $100 and $1,000 per violation. And remember that each poster violation carries its own fines. And then again, it's not just about the fines. Um, the real danger is in the threat of a lawsuit or a dispute. 
some of this comes into play because of the statute of limitation, limitations. It's a big advantage for employers because it allows dis a dismissal of a claim due to a late filing. And this is based on, on the, the poster um, um, dates and when it was posted and uh, what time and when that person was exposed to that. But if no poster exists, the statute of limitations may not apply. So if you can say we have this posted in our the place where our applicants fill out, um, all of these posters are posted in a, in a room where applicants complete their um, application or bring in their resumes and things like that, um, then you can say that person was uh, um, exposed to the laws that you abide by. But if you don't have any posters up and they don't see those, then the statute of limitations that exists for someone viewing your poster no longer applies. And they have unlimited um, or possibly unlimited, um, no limit on uh, filing their claims. Not notifying employees of their rights and responsibilities can be see, seen um, by the government as dealing in bad faith with your employees. If you're not informing them of their rights, um, it can result in increased damages in a lawsuit. So it's very important for your applicants and your employees to be able to see current posters um, on an everyday basis in your facility. So how to remain compliant? Well, I'll let you know right now, there is no one-stop shop for free government posters. You can spend a lot of time um, online trying to figure out which posters apply to you and then um, getting copies of them. And usually none of them are free. There are two ways that you can remain compliant. One of them is to research every labor law posting requirement for your company, and then request a current poster, and then post in areas frequented by employees. You would need to review those postings periodically for updates because things change, and you need to compile all required posters for remote workers. The alternative to this is to subscribe to a labor law posting service. As pay entry clients, you do have access to a poster subscription. These are the hard copy posters um, that you get on an annual basis that keep you updated. You will get the, uh, the number that you need for your facility or if you have multiple facilities. So if you don't know about this service or you're not aware of the posters, please reach out to your client advocate, which is your customer service person here at pay in the payroll area, and talk to them about it. Then once you do that, every time they're delivered, just post them in the areas that are frequented by, employee, by employees, or you can send an e-poster. Now we just have started a new e-poster service and if you're interested in, if you have remote employees that work at home all the time and you're interested in this, please reach out um, to us. We'll be happy to um, talk you through that. So does anybody today have any questions? If you do, you can type them in the questions block on your screen and Brianna will, I believe, help me with that. Hey, Kathy. Thanks for that presentation. That was a lot of really great information. It looks like you did such a good job. We only have one question. <laughs> so awesome. the question that awesome. we have, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah, it's pretty, especially with compliance and posters, it's it's very, uh, very black right. and white. <laughs> um, so the question right. that we uh, have yes, is, really. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. make sure you can hear me. All right. Um, so the question that we have is, would you happen to have a website for Michigan just to make sure that I am in compliance? Um, if you have the name of that person, we'll, we'll, we'll get you a list of the posters that need to be um, up in Michigan. Okay, perfect. So forward, uh, just forward that to me, Brianna, and I'll take care of it. Okay. And we had one other question come in right now. Um, are the labor law posters from pay entry automatically mailed to us or do we need to request this service? They should be automatically mailed to you. So if you're not receiving a poster, 
are an e updates on that. Those are not e posters, but the updates are electronic. Um, please reach out to your customer service person in your payroll um, in the, in our payroll department. And right, they can and make that sure that you're set up. There is no, there's no charge for that that I know of for any of our clients. Um, if you want more info, just um, let us know. HR services at payentry.com. Brianna, would you like to tell them what your um, webinar is about next week? Yes, next week we are going to be talking about creating effective employee handbooks. So we are at that time of year um, where people. Typically, people are looking at their employee handbooks, updating them, especially with a lot of the legislation in each of the states that changed due to the elections in November of 2020. So if you have not um, taken, taken a look at your employee handbook in a long time um, and you want to kind of get some of the basics of what makes them effective and look at some of the mistakes that are commonly made, we're going to take a look at those. Um, and if you do not have the time to take a look at your employee handbook right now, Kathy and I would be more than happy to help you with that. So during my webinar, I will talk you through what the process is to get pay entry to update your employee handbook to make sure that you are compliant so lots of good information coming next week all right that is a free service to any of you who are HR services clients that is that we have a contract to be your HR virtual um, assistant um, but we would love to talk to you about that and um, Brianna has lots of information for you next week so make sure you register for that on our website if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and end today's um, session. Thanks for coming and have a great day.